In the 1960s, when rockets were headed towards the moon, there was one tool used perhaps more than any other. This tool was the slide rule. Now, many today probably don't even know what this tool is, and if they do, they probably consider it archaic and outdated from a different era. An era of pocket protectors as well as typewriters. But as outdated as this tool is, it represents a brilliant understanding in the power of math and its place within our modern lives. It also represents an important use and the many different uses of math within our life. The slide rule can claim three different men as its inventor. The first is John Napier, who invented the logarithmic function in 1617. He described this in a popular research paper that he published. But in short, a logarithmic function allows us to describe how many of one number are multiplied together to get another number. For example, two times two times two, which of course we know equals eight. But this same problem can be illustrated with a logarithm. So let me write down that logarithmic function. It's going to be log two, eight equals three. All right, so this is our logarithmic function. The subscript two is called the base. It is the number that we're multiplying together to get eight. Therefore, the equations, these two equations are really equal. They say the same thing. It's just different ways of writing them. Now, I know the logarithm might look more complicated, but the bigger the numbers get and the more complex the numbers get, the logarithm is going to be so much easier to understand especially when you have a slide rule or today a calculator. They're a lot simpler than continually multiplying numbers together. The second inventor to influence the slide rule was Edmund Gunther, who shortly after John Napier invented the logarithmic function, built a mechanical device to make math using this logarithmic function much simpler. So let's, let's look at a ruler just for an example here. A logarithmic scale is a little bit different than a linear scale. So let's review a linear scale first. So a linear scale would be like your normal ruler. So I have a ruler here. If, if you look at a linear scale, the space in between the numbers is exactly the same. So the space between one and two and two and three and three and four is all equivalent. It equals each other. Now, of course, on this ruler, it's an inch, but on a linear scale, it'd be exactly the same. But on a logarithmic scale, the scale changes. So if you were to look at this slide run, I'm not sure how well you're gonna be able to see this, but if you look at this, these numbers are very tiny, but here's one and here's two. So that looks about like two to three inches. And then if you look at the difference between two and three, that's about two inches. Now, if we look between three and four, that's about an inch. So the space between the numbers is getting smaller as we go up the scale. That's what a logarithmic scale is. And by that nature, it allows, to, it allows us to measure the distance between two points and multiply the number. On this scale, we can only add or subtract the numbers, but on a logarithmic scale, we can multiply or divide doing much more complex math operations. So the third inventor was William Autred. He invented something similar to a slide rule in 1622. He took two Gunther scales and placed them next to each other. This allowed the difference between two points on those rulers to be more easily measured. Initially, his ruler was round, which sounds pretty strange, but by the 1650s, he had invented what looks more like the modern slide rule. He took two points on this slide rule and fix them stationary. Then in the center, he added a sliding rule, hence the slide rule, that allowed the points to be easily measured. All right, well, that's how the device was invented, but how do we use it? It probably still sounds a little bit complicated to you, especially when you involve a complex mathematical operator. Well, let's consider this example. All right, so I've got to move some things around on my desk so I can slide my rulers around. All right, so on the top of your screen here, you'll see a linear scale. I'm using two rulers for an example here. And on the bottom, got that upside down. On the bottom 
is the slide rule using a logarithmic scale. So using these two scales, we're gonna consider some mathematical examples. First, the linear scale. This could be used to add or subtract, um, and that's pretty much it. But you know, the complex math is a little bit limited. So for example, we're going to add two to three. So we're gonna line up the first mark right over here on your left side. We're gonna line that up with three. All right, so we line it up with three. Now we're going to find where two, because we're adding two, aligns on the ruler. So if we look two aligns with five, five is our answer. And of course, I mean, that could be used anyway. All right, so that was the linear scale, but now let us consider the slide rule using a logarithmic function. So we're gonna use the example two times two. So we need to find the answer to this. We're gonna start this problem by using our slide rule. So if you look all the way over here, and it might be difficult to see on your screen, but on the sliding rule, this slides, on the sliding rule, there's a one. That's called the index. So we're going to align one with the number two on the stationary scale. So if you look right here, the one is aligned with the two because we're multiplying by two. Now it's as simple as finding where the other two aligns. So we can move our indicator down and we find that two aligns right there. Two aligns with four. So four is our answer. It's as simple as that. That is what allows us to multiply. Division would be carried out in much the same manner. Now for larger numbers, you'll see on my slide rule that my slide rule here ends at five, which of course does say that five times two is 10, which is correct. But after I get past five, my numbers fall off the end of the scale here. Well, that's why it slides two directions. So you'll simply slide it the other direction. We'll align one. There's another one on the right side. We'll align one with two. And there we are. We'll be able to complete the rest of our uh, calculation. So those are some small numbers, but what about some larger numbers? Well, obviously the slide rule isn't hundreds or thousands of units long, so how can we do those bigger numbers? Because I'm sure many of the space program and NASA calculators used very large numbers. Well, this is where decimals are involved. So I'm gonna use a really simple example, but let's multiply 300 times 200. We're going to start by reducing these numbers and we can do this in our heads. If we divide each number by 100, then our equation becomes much simpler. So it becomes three times two. And then we're gonna find the answer to that. That's much simpler and those numbers are on our slide roll. We're going to align one with the three so we're going to slide this down till one aligns with the three right here, okay? Now we're just gonna simply find where two aligns, three times two. So we're gonna slide down two, two aligns with the six right there. So that means that three times two equals six. Now all we have to do is convert this back to 100. So we're going to multiply this by 100, which of course equals 600. The slide rule changed the way math was done. I've only shown some very simple examples here, but knowledgeable operators of these tools could quickly compute complex mathematical problems much more accurately and much more quickly than they ever could on paper alone or even in their heads. So although this device was invented in the 17th century, its use extended well into the 20th. NASA is famous for having used these in the 60s extensively to put man on the moon. If you watch many movies taking place during the Apollo program, then you'll see them using these extensively. One is Apollo 13. If you watch that movie, you'll see them using a slide rule on numerous occasions. 
Many students, college and high school, also carried these with them. They used to carry them clipped to their belt in a case or had smaller versions in their pockets if they used them extensively. Any profession, even accountants, would use these quite a bit because of the math involved. They could easily, quickly compute adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and a host of other mathematical operations. All right, the slide rule is an immensely simple device, but it utilizes complex mathematical principles and understanding of math. The slide rule is our seventh major milestone in the history of computing. And that's it. That's the slide rule. The importance of this device cannot be understated. It has no fancy computer parts and it's not digital in any way, but it literally put man on the moon. It's said that Buzz Aldrin used his slide rule in the final moments before landing the Eagle Lunar Lander on the moon and hours before Neil Armstrong walked on the moon in July 1969. I'm sure many of your parents or grandparents, depending on your age of course, we remember when these devices were used as commonplace. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching me this week. I really do appreciate it. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Each week, I'll be exploring the history of computing and its use as a tool within our modern society. I can't wait to continue through this journey with you. So please subscribe and hit the bell icon. And if you're already subscribed, consider sharing the video with a friend. I also invite you to follow me on social media. I'm active daily on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Wherever hashtags are used, remember to use tech is a tool. That's how I will find your posts. As always, each week I will publish a blog accompanying the video that explains and goes into slightly more depth. For this video, it mentions a few articles as well as a video um, on logarithms as well as the slide rule. So if you're interested in learning more, then please check those out in the description down below. All right, next week we'll be doing a little bit more math, but it only involves two numbers. So it's not that difficult and I can't wait to join you as we learn together. See you next week, bye.